Hey guys, C Drama Invasion here. Welcome back to a new video. This is part one of this month's monthly review. It's basically from last month and things that I just wrapped up watching but didn't really get a chance to review. So let's just jump into that and make sure to subscribe and later on tell me your thoughts and comments on these dramas as well. First off, we have Who is the Murderer? starring Dong Zijian and Zhao Liying. Probably one of the strongest performances from both the male lead and the female lead. All around cast, I thought they did really well. This is a drama following a traumatic case where the male lead was traumatized by a murder that happened and this person is now on the loose and they're a serial murder. They basically put like anesthetics in you and put a clock so the victims can witness themselves bleeding out basically and counting down the seconds until they die. It's really cruel and this kid grows up after witnessing someone like a mother-like figure to him pass away and she's one of the victims so he has a strong resolve to go to the police force. The other male lead is actually the young police officer that could have stopped this all if he shot the murderer. But because it was like one of his first ever cases that he took and he was not prepared he basically let the serial killer get away and this is when in the future which is i think episode three where they show you present day i think it's been like 20 years or like something like that and they've all grown up but that case remains unsolved then we have Zhao Li Ying's character, which is probably one of my favorite characters of this drama. I thought she was super creepy and mysterious throughout the entire thing. She's a morally gray character that a lot of people, some people at least, sympathize with, while others people like me who says that even though she has a traumatic past and all, it doesn't justify some of her actions. It's super messed up, especially the fact that she's a psychologist and she kind of manipulates a lot of people in this show. But hands down, I found her to be like the most interesting character compared to the underwhelming villain, which was why instead of like a 8 or a 9, this drama dropped to like around a 7 for me. It wasn't the worst, it's just the ending. I felt like they built up so much emotion, some really great setup, and then they just gave us a conclusion that didn't feel satisfying. Do I still recommend it? Yes. And that's probably just because there isn't too many suspense or thriller dramas in China right now. That's amazing quality, to be honest, when it comes to the script. Most of them starts off really high, great potential, good cast. Everything is perfect, but then they just fail to wrap it up. But because there's a new emergence of actors and actresses wanting to take on these types of roles, I think that in the future, there'll be a lot more new and interesting ways and stories that will be more interesting, at least for the mystery genre. Next is Lo Yang, and this is a drama starring Wang Yibo, Huang Xuan, as well as Victoria Song. First thing first, this drama has one hell of a budget and it really shows the amount of designs and details in the clothing, in the sets alone. And there's like scenes of the joint corpse. There's just so many candles in the background, which tells me, okay, they really put in the work. I mean, imagine just lighting up like a hundred candles alone just for this one shot. It's beautiful and I'm grateful for that. However, I am going to deduct some points because there is a plagiarism scandal that came out and apparently a lot of things in this like embroidery and some designs and stuff were not original, which really sucks. The fight scenes are super intense though. I found myself holding my breath and Huang Shan is just such a good actor. He's so charismatic and I live for every single scene he's in. I love the bromance. I thought that Song Yi's character was okay however her character was underused just because as an actress i know she can do more but they just gave her this kind of annoying noble woman type of character that just follows around her husband who she has a crush on and calls him erlang and runs around basically following him and trying to get his attention the entire drama which really gets repetitive at times but the good thing is he does fall for her slowly like very slowly but because of that, you kind of fall for her too, or you find her a little bit more likable. The major problem with this drama is that it ended up being quite predictable. The plot twists and everything, I totally saw it coming. Tell me if you haven't seen 
who like the evil person was the whole time and also in the end when victoria song passed away i was like that was very unnecessary and kind of random at the same time literally everything settled and then she gets like stabbed or something nine out of ten for the music the sets everything but overall rating i would have to give this like an eight eight point two five Next drama I watch is Light to Love, starring Lo Yunxi and Cheng Xiao. This is a drama that has mixed reviews, and I'm also someone who says that I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. And it started off quite good and really strong because I liked that the female lead was doing this little mission of hers, and she's trying to get revenge, she's trying to find the truth about what happened to her family. It was obvious who the villain was the whole time and because of that it was quite draggy. There was a lot of exciting moments and sweet moments but in between there's a lot of draggy moments as well. And honestly half of the episodes I was like what is the point of this and this could have been shortened and cut down like 10 episodes. And there's moments where the girl is really smart and then there's other moments that just throws logic and everything aside and she acts really rash and emotional. But one redeeming quality I guess is that I didn't have to skip over the side characters or side couples the whole time. I really do like Oscar and I think her name is Choo Choo or something. Oscar, I think he was in another drama Falling Into Your Smile with Cheng Xiao as Kay and here he's like a rock star character too and I liked him here. Overall I gave this a 6.5 out of 10. I also watched Sword Snow Stride starring Zhang Ruoyun and I thought it was super funny. He's one of my all-time favorite actors and he's just a natural on screen. The pacing is quite slow and I feel like you have to truly like wuxia dramas to like this drama. If you're in here just for the comedy or whatever, it's not gonna last. You have to like wuxia and just know that this is the type of drama that really takes its time and it's all about politics and mind games. There's words and sentences and things that you kind of circle back to or you might really have to rewatch to understand and it might go over your head the first time you watch it. Super impressed with the cast of course. Um, I was also very impressed with how good the romance scenes were even though it's very minimal and slow burn. The chemistry was there and I found the female lead to be adorable with him. There's just loads of quirky and funny characters. And even if Zheng Ruoyun and his father might interact with each other as like super lighthearted and goofy or whatever, the amount of planning and manipulation. For example, Su Xiao's character is just so genius. The whole time I said there's no way the male lead can outsmart him. This man is on another level and whenever he plays chess, he literally thinks of all the pieces and everything you see the male lead do is planned and controlled by his father and that's a good and bad thing because it got to a point where i was like what is the male lead doing like it doesn't feel like he's going to be able to become the king of the north since all you see is him meeting new masters all with various capabilities and each one building up to the big bad which is supposed to be our goal right however it ends and i'm not sure if there's a season two but it ends with him promising to come back and duel him and win in the future. So because I didn't know there would be a season two, I guess it kind of dimmed my enjoyment of this because the whole time I was like, I'm enjoying it, but it's kind of repetitive seeing a bunch of new masters swoop in and take the spotlight. Meanwhile, the male lead, even though he's very lucky and a lot of people really like him and they respect him because of his personality and he wins people over you don't really see him fight as much as you do. For a drama called Swords No Stride, it was a lot of masters doing the work or his henchmen and his companions and side characters doing all the work. So that was a shame, but overall, I still gave it an 8.5. Now this makes me want to watch The Faded General so bad and I hope that one airs. Onto the K-dramas I watched. The first one is called The Red Sleeve. I gave this one a 9 out of 10. 
goodness, I don't even know where to start with this one. Yes, there's been a lot of hype over the internet for this drama, but it's totally worth watching. The chemistry was on point, the music and casting choice was just beautiful. The only thing that bugged me was the dementia aspect of the older king and how many times they kind of use it as an easy out for the court lady to get away with things. So that's probably my only biggest complaint because some moments they really build it up as an intense scene and they give you like a cliffhanger, something's gonna happen, but of course um, nothing happens and they do it like once or twice, which is a bit underwhelming and repetitive. But also shout out to the cast which snagged a whole bunch of multiple awards at the NBC 2021 awards show. I think they won best couple and drama of the year. And because of the love of the fandom, this one got an extension making ep 17 happen and I'm so thankful because it's an hour and 40 minutes long and it was the most beautiful and strongest performance of the entire drama and I'm gonna start spoiling in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so the last episode was just the most heartbreaking and bittersweet realistic ending and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. So basically through life and death, pain and love, they both struggled in their own ways and you see the terrible things that happen. You see how as a king, he ends up losing his um, firstborn and then after Dukim, the female lead, dies. I saw so many comments saying that she was so cruel to not say I love you to him the whole time they were together. But for me, it's her actions and she just had to stand her ground. She's so different from so many other female leads just because um, she could have gave in and technically she did, but she had to keep that part to herself. And it makes so much sense because it was hinted at throughout the whole time that she was hesitant to get in a relationship with him to the point that she had to leave the palace. And this is because she just wants to choose her own choices, but she knows that when she becomes his wife, she can't do that. He's not even her man anymore. He's the man of the nation. She has to share him with everyone. It's a burden to her, but she still ended up doing it because she does love him. It's so sad and realistic to see the amount of loneliness that the king went through. Everyone has an opportunity or they should have a chance to grieve and mourn the people they love. However, for him, he had to bury it all away and just like swallow it up even if it killed him inside because he's the king and it's his duty and a responsibility to just move on, act like everything's okay. And the ending was him, I think, him dying and passing away. He's in like this dreamlike state and his options were to open the door and leave, which means that he'll probably wake up or he chooses to live in this moment forever, meaning I guess he goes into the afterlife and meets her. And in this life, he chose to meet her and give everything up for her. Essentially saying that they both died, but are in the afterlife together. I have no complaints about the last episode at all. And honestly, if they made it like a perfect happy ending, it would not work, nor would it have such a big impact. The other K-dramas I watched was Yumi Cells and The Silent Sea. Let's start with Yumi Cells. I gave this an 8.5 out of 10. It's super addictive, so funny and relatable. Some of the funniest moments is with the animated love cells kind of creeping into the other person's village. I thought it was so cute and adorable. There were some moments in this drama that made me laugh so hard and also gave me secondhand embarrassment. I love that the writers doesn't skip the details and basically portrayed every single thought you would have on your first date in every single situation. Also, Choi Min-ho from Shiny is so attractive and he just forever has a baby face because I've been a fan of Shiny forever and he still always looks as good and never ages. I'm happy that this drama brought a lot of new opportunities for him and he'll be starring in an upcoming Netflix rom-com next year. I'm happy with the choices made in this drama and also showing that none of the characters are perfect. So it starts off like Wung was her life, he's everything, her man. But slowly you see her try to focus on herself more and realize that love is not the perfect solution to everything. There's also moments where the male lead is kind of annoying at times and it's not because it's his personality it's just because he's human and i'm happy that they showed moments where he was kind of on his phone he started to not listen too much to her 
But yes, they're still in love. However, little things like that happen where your partner gets distracted or after years of being together, you're not as close and you're even on each other's nerves. Overall, I'm super excited for the next season and I thought it's quite a refreshing drama. I also watched the sci-fi drama The Silent Sea. This, I think it's a dystopian world and it's about a world where they're fighting over water because there's a lack of water supply. So these um, astronauts are sent to the moon on a secret mission that only Gong Yu, the leader, knows. But soon you realize that there's something ominous going on. And the last team, they were basically massacred. So I saw so many people complaining about this drama and I understand. However, for me, I think it really picks up after episode three. It is such a shame that for such a beautiful star-studded cast, the CGI was quite bad and quite noticeable from the first episode. There were also pacing inconsistencies and scenes that needs to be fleshed out. Of course, if we had more episodes, this would have been better. And I thought 10 episodes would have been great, especially for dramas like this with such a big cast that you're not too sure if they can guarantee a season two or if they can bring everyone back for the next season. As usual, we have an open ending, which kind of annoys me to no end these days, especially when there isn't a season two confirmed. I thought it wasn't perfect, but the acting was still good. And overall gave it a 7.5 out of 10 for good and interesting concept. However, it was the script's fault and maybe even the editing. The last two dramas, one is a Japanese BL drama and the other one is a Thai romance action drama. The Japanese one is called My Beautiful Man or He Who Is Beautiful. This takes place in high school and it has six episodes with 24 minutes an episode. It's about a male lead who's been bullied a lot and the other male lead who's basically the most popular and beautiful man of the school. The introverted one ends up having a crush on the popular character and they have like this secret and kind of weird relationship. I thought this drama was way too short to become anything interesting or good. It deserves to be at least 10 episodes to feel fleshed out. It felt way too choppy for me and I understand that it's supposed to be psychological but all it did for me was feel like an abrupt change of heart. I know it was supposed to be like a plot twist that oh the other guy liked him the whole time with episode 5 where it showed his perspective of the entire story and how he couldn't express it therefore he was confused and then it made him become like violent and rude to the male lead. And I get it that it's kind of semi-realistic with how teens are filled with passion. They do what they want. They're flawed. They hurt each other and they have outbursts of crazy emotions. But overall, it just felt really toxic to me. There was a very concerning scene too where the introverted um, male lead was fantasizing of like shooting the school up or something. And scenes like that is very troublesome, especially when they don't address it properly. He definitely has issues and I wish that they went deeper into the mental health realm of things rather than just giving us little glimpse. And because you give us too many little glimpse without actually giving us a full answer to it or without tackling these deeper underlying issues, it felt really choppy and terrible. I gave this a five out of 10 just because I get what they're trying to do, but it failed to meet that expectation. Also for me, the romance was kind of stupid and the actors was a bit stiff too. Last but not least is Game of Outlaws. I gave this one an 8.5 out of 10. I thought that the action here was amazing. If you haven't seen a Thai drama that interests you recently, I recommend this one because you have Mark Prin and Theo as the main leads and they're just so good together. The action, the amount of plot twists and things that happen in just one episode is mind blowing. Literally no punches pulled. I forgot how dark and crazy Thai dramas are. And it's literally some of the craziest action I've ever seen, especially the prison scene fight. And basically people are getting shot left and right. It's super unpredictable, interesting. There's not really a love triangle since the male lead is super devoted to the female lead. Stunning performance from the female lead though. Her emotions are so raw. It really wows me and when you see her backed up in a corner Her desperation her anger. It just shows on her face 
My biggest complaint for this drama is that there's really stupidly obnoxiously loud background music in some scenes where there's already fighting, there's already bullets flying everywhere, and people are yelling and throwing punches. You hear all of that along with the bombs, guns, motorcycles. It's just too much and it makes my head spin. And about the ending, I'm honestly not mad. Um, I'll just pretend the last like three minutes didn't happen. And this is probably the longest review video that I have up, but I hope you stayed all the way till the end. And let me know your thoughts and comments on these types of dramas. I probably will be making another one or two, one for February. If you want a little sneak peek on what I'll be talking about next um, episode, I'll probably be talking about the currently airing K-dramas as well as Ace Troops and Reset and The Lion's Secret. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.